Scientists say man-made climate change is threatening the survival. Unequivocal evidence of climate change. This is what modern-day clear-cutting looks like. Giant machines... The growing concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is changing our climate. I have eco-anxiety, and this is how I cope. Hello, everybody. My name is Tyler Lloyd, and this is my YouTube channel all about living a happier, healthier, more sustainable life. And today, I'm going to be talking about eco-anxiety. I suffer from eco-anxiety to varying degrees, and maybe you do too, but maybe you aren't aware of what eco-anxiety is. And it's exactly what it sounds like, anxiety about the state of the environment. If you are interested in environmental protection, caring for Earth's natural resources, wildlife, the ocean, and follow along with news, you probably have a certain degree of anxiety. And that anxiety can manifest itself in many different ways. Anger or frustration, particularly for people around you that don't seem to get it, that aren't doing enough. You can have you know, existential dread, starting to wonder, you know, what's the point of, of you doing any action, of, of just life in general, it can become very dark. And if it does, you know, please reach out to a medical professional. Uh, don't just, you know, listen to a guy on the internet like myself. You know, this can manifest itself in some very traditional ways of anxiety, dipping into depression. But these are the things that I do when I am faced with eco-anxiety that I think might be helpful to you. And the first thing on my list is to do something. If you are concerned about the environment, there are certain things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life to ensure that you yourself aren't contributing to the problem. This can give you a sense of agency that you are able to affect change and can be very, very empowering. Now, maybe this is sort of my uh, thinking of that I try to focus on my locus of control and what can I actually do to affect change? What should I be really concerned about and block out the rest? But this really works for me. Additionally, it helps make your life a little bit more congruent, living in the way that you're thinking. If you're concerned about the environment, but day to day doing things that you know go against environmental concerns and that you're actively uh, being a part of the problem, it's not gonna make you feel any better. So what are the ways that you can make changes in your own life? And what type of changes am I talking about? Well. Really, it comes down to consuming less and wasting less. So any way that you can do that, the better. But my next thing of things to do when you're faced with eco-anxiety is to do nothing. Now, this may sound a little counterintuitive here, but what I'm talking about is in the short term to try to disconnect, to step back a little bit and collect yourself. I have a tendency when I see a problem or recognize that something isn't right, I want to attack it. I want to try to find a way to, to fix it, find the solution and go at it. But more and more, I'm learning that that is not the right thing to do, that I need to pause, take a step back and collect myself. And maybe that looks like, you know, just putting down my phone and stopping that doom scrolling or, you know, going and taking a nap, turning off my brain for a little bit. And if you have a favorite furry friend, maybe going and hanging out with them. Any way that you can take some time to uh, just relax and heal a little bit can be very, very beneficial because if you're gonna affect real change, you need to look out for yourself first to make sure that you're able to step up when it's time. Then when you're ready, address the source of the problem. I am all about personal actions in my daily life to make sure that I'm doing the most that I can to protect the environment around me. However, I'm just one person and I, individual people's actions aren't really the biggest source of the problem. There was a report that came out that showed that a hundred companies accounted for 71% of global greenhouse emissions, a hundred companies. So your individual actions, while are very, very important, aren't really going to move the needle. So you need to attack the problem at its source. So what does that look like? Well, that's not spending money with companies that are damaging the environment. 
of those 100 companies that account for 71%, they're all oil and gas and coal companies, energy companies. So trying to divest from fossil fuels in your daily life. For your investments as well, if you have a 401k or investing in a brokerage account, making sure that you're not supporting those companies with your money. And day to day, you know, where are you shopping? Rather than shopping at companies that are making the problem worse, are there local organizations or businesses that you can put your money into? And then speaking of organizations, are there groups that you can donate to that are lobbying to change the laws that allow these companies to pollute? And that brings me to my next point is to vote. To get involved and vote for leaders that are going to try to change things. Because the vast majority of pollution that has happened, um, I believe has been you know, somewhat legally uh, done. Now, it may not be morally acceptable, and we can have a big debate about that, but laws have allowed it to happen unchecked. And if we really want to change it, we have to change the laws, and that starts with the people that we elect into office. And it's not only at the national level. Uh, the local level as well can have a big, big impact, especially when it comes to climate change mitigation, and those local leaders eventually become national leaders. So starting local is a good way to look at it as well. Another thing I do when I'm feeling down and having a bout of eco-anxiety is looking for ways to help others. I recognize that I have certain privileges and I'm not going to be as affected by the effects of climate change as others. That's just a fact. Climate change is going to affect um, impoverished communities more, indigenous communities, communities of color, people who are disabled. So this, this is known. So how can I help those communities? What are the organizations that I can donate to, mutual aid organizations, uh, groups that try to help these people maybe weatherize their homes or relocate or just become more aware of the situation. So this is one thing that I do is trying to help others because as a pretty well-off white guy, I'll fare decently well, but I shouldn't shirk the problems of others at the same time. So this is something that I do is look out for others. And the very last thing that I do is return to nature. I'm an environmentalist because I love the natural world. I am in awe of nature every time I go outside and just take a moment to really, really look at the world around me. The natural world is absolutely amazing, filled with life and energy, and it just sparks my curiosity. So whenever I'm feeling down, I return to the reason that I became an environmentalist, going outside. And that can be going on a hike or just a walk around my neighborhood. I was recently in Kentucky and did some fishing, uh, something that I enjoyed as a child and just spent some time sitting outside. And I found it a great way to help me reconnect to the natural world and some of the reasons that I identify as an environmentalist and that I make these videos. So let me know if you have any tips or tricks for dealing with eco-anxiety, ways that you help manage it and cope with it. And I look forward to providing some more of those concrete tips of things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life to make sure that you're leaving the world a happier, healthier, and more sustainable place. And before you go, if you want to check out a few more of my videos, you can check on this video, an introduction to sustainable living, or this video on minimalism. My name is Tyler Lloyd, and I wish you the best. Later.